Hey everybody, Sean here, and welcome to Revealing Truth. Many have said, I didn't think it could get any weirder, but then it does. And today is no exception. The person we're looking at is Nancy Cohen, and she's the leader of Global Sons, and she's big on heavenly ascension. She's even got a group of heavenly ascenders, and in her ascension groups, they have multitudes of people in the nations who join together every week to get caught up in the moment in the twinkling of an eye and are carried away to heaven to follow the pattern that Jesus set before us. But you have to apply to be a part of this group. But that's gonna cost you $30 a month or a discounted $300 a year. What a bargain. These people have no shame. And in today's video, she's gonna share Jesus' loneliness testimony. Hi, um, I'm welcoming you all to this video. And this is my testimony about how Global Ascension Network was started. In 1997, I was in an ascension with the Lord, and I was caught up into heaven into a beautiful, huge auditorium building. Outside of this building were standing two 10-story high angels, and they opened up this door, which on the covering of the door were the... Um, pictures facing one another of two warring lions and their hands were up like this in a warring position. And we played that part just to give you an idea of where this is all coming from. But let's skip forward to when she met lonely Jesus. As I continued my journey down to the front, I saw that it was Yeshua and he was sitting on the stage and he had his, his head rested on his hand his elbow rested on his knee, kind of in the form or the fashion of the sculpture well known as the thinker. Anyway, as I walked down and I got closer, I saw that he was actually weeping tears of gold. And I looked at him, I was so stunned because I've only known him in the fullness of his radiant, blinding blue white light. And to see him in the middle of this pulsating light that seemed dim uh, to me at the time uh, was a, a new experience for me. So I looked up to him and I said, Lord, what is this place? And he looked at me and with all solemnity, he said, this is the place of my loneliness. So apparently there's a special place in heaven where Jesus goes to be lonely. Obvious nonsense that the King of King and Lord of Lords is lonely, but wait till you hear why. He said, this is the place of my loneliness. And I looked at him and I said, Lord, you're King of Kings, Lord of Lords. The whole universe belongs to you and responds to you. How is it even conceivably possible that you would have a place called the place of your loneliness? And as he looked up, these tears of gold began to drip down his face. And he said, I'm lonely because my bride never comes here. Well, that's because nowhere in scripture are we taught that we can ascend to heaven. We're actually told that nobody except Jesus has ascended to heaven. And she responds. So I looked at him and my response with weeping and tears was, okay, Lord, I... I will spend the rest of my life bringing people into the heavens to fill the place of your loneliness that you'll be no longer lonely. What a nice lady and a powerful one. I mean, she's gonna spend the rest of her life bringing people to heaven. That's a superpower I've never heard of before, but she's gonna explain this. It was immediately after that time that I was thrust into the nations. And since then, I've been to 140 nations of the earth. Wherever I go, I train people to come up into the heavens, to stand face to face with him, to receive divine downloads of wisdom, knowledge, understanding that can only come directly from him and from the seven spirits before the throne. Since that day, I've raised up multitudes and multitudes of people in the nations who will join together on a weekly basis um, 
to get caught up in the moment in the twinkling of an eye and carried away to heaven to follow the pattern that Jesus set before us in John chapter five, when he said, I of my own self can do nothing, only that which I see my father doing. I don't speak of my own self, but only that which I hear my father saying. So by following that pattern, if Jesus Christ of his own self could do nothing except what he saw the father doing, how do we think that we can produce anything of eternal value if we cannot see what the father is doing? This is absolute crazy talk. Why is she quoting 1 Corinthians 15, 52? That's about Jesus' return and when we're going to meet him in the sky and be given new bodies. This isn't a recipe for us to ascend to heaven at will. And her quoting Jesus in John 5, 19 is ridiculous. This isn't teaching us that we must ascend to heaven to see what the Father is doing in order for us to do anything of eternal value. We're told to share the gospel with people, some plant and others water. And I'd say leading someone to salvation in Christ definitely has eternal value. But this is her story of how her network started. And she spouts out a Bill Johnsonism. And the Lord said, now it's time to start something called Global Ascension Network and to begin to form these uh, networks to network together. And the word of the Lord was network my, the networks so that my net works. I assure you, God doesn't need her network to make his net work whatever that means. But this is a big movement. So pretty much for the last four to five years, Shannon and I have been gathering people from around the earth to join what are called global ascension groups. In these groups, they do a, a weekly corporate ascension. Many of our groups are multinational. Some of them, I believe, have at least 10 nations, even in a single group represented. This is how absolutely lost the church is today. And it gets even crazier. We become co-creators with God. His promise is he's going to take us to places we've never been before. He's going to show us things we've never seen before. He's going to tell us things that we've never heard before. That he's going to teach us and lead us and guide us and direct us so that we can fulfill our divine purpose for which we were created to be co-workers and co-creators together with him for the establishment of his kingdom and his righteousness in all of the earth. Well, if that isn't what itching ears want to hear, I don't know what is. But because of her, there's a happy ending that she's going to share. Today, I can truly say he is no longer uh, in a place where his light is, is like pulsating dimly. In fact, even on that day when I agreed to spend the rest of my life bringing people into the heavenly realms, he jumped off of that platform, grabbed me and began to dance me around this huge auditorium. And when it was the, the divine dance was done, he looked into my eyes and began to weep again. And he said, finally. He is so thankful for each and every one of you and your participation in coming to relieve him from the place of his loneliness. My friends, this lady is deceiving thousands of people around the world, and it's all in the name of money. She's got 3,000 members in this group, and if each one is paying her $30 a month, then she's making $90,000 a month from this unbiblical New Age nonsense. She also works with other New Agey Christians like Liz Wright and Justin Paul Abraham. And we've got videos on them as well. My question is, what are these people actually experiencing that they continue to financially support this woman? This nonsense about teaching people to ascend to heaven so that Jesus won't be lonely is 100% without a shadow of a doubt not biblical but they must be experiencing something to continue paying her for this deceit. As I've said before, I truly believe that Satan's biggest target is those that are calling themselves Christians, but are not truly born again yet. 
May it be the Demon Slayer crowd or the over-the-top experience-seeking crowd. Who knows? Anyhow, we're going to leave it here for today, but if you weren't aware of Nancy Cohen, she's definitely another one to mark and avoid. So leave your comments below, and until next time, take care and God bless.